All right, so now I'm going to use lens blur. Now, to prepare for it, I had to go to channels, and I had to create a new channel with a little post-it icon in the channel menu. And then I painted it with the gradient tool, just using a straight black to white gradient. And this is what that channel looks like, right? Having this on, I can actually paint it and see it a little bit better. So where is the closest part of my subject to the uh, audience, to the viewer? It's right here. These things are sticking out, right? And then as we go back this way, that gets further and further away. So that's why I did the gradient in that direction. And if I want to redo it, maybe a little shallower, maybe like that, whoops, like that. It actually doesn't matter if it goes black to white or white to black. But I think I like looking at it this way. Okay, then I want to make sure RGB layer is on and selected and turn off the alpha layer. It's still there and I'm going to be using it, but you want to turn it off so you don't have to see that red all the time. Okay, then I go to layers. I've flattened everything onto this top layer by holding down Option and Layer Merge Visible. And now I go to Filter, and I go to Blur, but I don't go to Gaussian Blur. I go to the other filter we're allowed to use in this class because it, it fits within the realm of photography, and that's Lens Blur. And now, this is what's really cool. I want to set it to preview it, and I want to set it to do it faster. And you can already see it's doing it. And I want my source of my depth map to be my alpha one layer. So this is what it looks like with nothing. That's just a Gaussian blur. But if I set the source to be my alpha layer, that means anything that is white in my alpha layer is going to go really out of focus. And the only thing that's going to leave in sharp focus based on what was in the exposure was what was black here in the corner. So right now, this is the only thing that's in focus, this little corner. Everything else is slowly gradating out of focus. Now, the focal distance. Now I can set where I actually want it to be in focus along that distance. So as I'm pushing that, I'm going through the, the whites. I guess that was black. Through the blacks into the grays, pushing it past the foreground just a little bit into the middle ground where I actually have in focus on my exposure and it really increases the blur and that depth map and the back is so much more out of focus now. Now if you're going to use this I say use it pretty strongly so I have my radius up really high so I can really see the effects but right now it's just previewing. When I hit OK it will actually apply that, that blur onto this layer I've created. But it has to be a full layer. It can't be like an overlay layer. It's actually going to affect these pixels. Okay, so now it's done it. And this looks much more like a, a much more open aperture, a much narrower depth of field than without it. And what I like about that potentially is I like how it kind of obliterates the texture from the shadow. But by having it on this layer floating on top, we always tend to overdo things in processing. I can just take its opacity down slightly. And if I think, oh, I really like it at the back, but I don't like it so much at the front, well, then I can actually just use a large eraser at a low opacity, really soft, because this is all about focus pools, really large, and I can just weaken it a little bit here at the front. <laughs> so basically what I have is a layer that's where I've used lens blur and I've erased out the front part of it a little bit to let the background show through. And what I'm mostly using lens blur for is just to round out that back edge a little bit. Maybe I want to keep this more in focus. 
because I'm really trying to get the eye to flow through it and kind of hook back up and get into these little caverns before it leaves. Take that opacity down a little bit more. All right, so that's about as, as compelling as I can make that little piece of wood while keeping it all contained on a white background. I didn't end up using the shadow too much. I could have dodged the shadow and brought color out of it and stuff, but I think this is working pretty well. And I like how it looks somewhat dangerous, like it's kind of an asteroid coming towards you, tilting towards you. And the angle of the shadow helps with that. Okay, so if I'm done, I say File, Save, and I've named it Carl Fry Assignment 4, Effective Object, PSD, right? Then I save it as a JPEG. And I'm, we're actually going to upload three things. We're going to upload your sketches as a JPEG. I already have that. We're going to upload your finished exposure. I just saved that. Where'd it go? <laughs> Oh, uh, it's saved into my folder. Usually I'll hit Command D and save it onto the desktop. But it's right there. Put that on the desktop. And here are my sketches. Put that on the desktop. And then lastly, I'm going to save it basically just by raw exposure. Right off my memory card. And I have that too. So I actually don't need to save it again. But to be safe, especially if you're using it as a placeholder, you want to put your name as the name of the file. OK. So it came a long way from that to, to the finish even after carefully getting the best exposures I could. And we're really controlling every formal element. Lighting, composition, color, edge control. Just to make it as effective as possible. As engaging and interesting as possible. And it's at, it's at a high enough resolution that I should be able to print it. Right? It can print 8 by 12 by 300. That's plenty big enough. Okay, now for uploading. We go to the class photo bucket. You go to the photo assignments. This is assignment 4. Remember, you have to upload something to the right folder. And here they are. You'll click to upload there. I will click to upload in my instructor demonstrations. You can see I was smart and I already put my sketch and my raw exposure up just in case, right? It's always good to, sh to sh show me your progress as you go. And then I'm going to label them to show up in the right order. by using my name and then just numbers. So Carl 3 and then all of your your shots will show up. The other interesting thing about this project, and I'm excited to see your work. It's been fun to see you work on them is because we're deciding everything on our own from the very composition, I'm starting to see your visual taste. And you're starting to see my visual taste. Even though I'm aware of, of playing with the corners and playing with angles and horizontals and verticals, I tend to always go for the floating mass in the middle. It's something I really like about that. And it's just something I can't really ignore. And when you look at my fine artwork photography,
you'll see that I follow those instincts as well. You know, even if it's like a Walmart sign. I tend to compose it floating in the middle so that your eye really sees all the shapes it cuts out. So now that we're, we're kind of a third into the semester, we're starting to see our visual taste. We want to start thinking about the formal elements that go into it, like playing subtlety against hard edges. how we compose, how we use positive space versus negative space, right? How we treat edges, sharp edges versus soft edges, how it pulls the eye in. Yeah, all right. That will do it.